The jury looks ready to announce its sentence for James Holmes, so let's take a moment and listen in. We have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count four, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Gordon Cowden. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count five, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Jessica Gowie. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count six, murder in the first degree after deliberation, John Larimer. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form count seven, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Matthew McQuinn. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form, count eight, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Michaela Medic. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form, count nine, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Veronica Mosher Sullivan. We, the jury, do not have a unanimous final sentencing verdict on this count, and we, the jury, understand that as a result, the court will impose a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole on this count. Final sentencing verdict form, count 10, murder in the first degree after deliberation, Alex Sullivan. We, the jury, and just to bring you up to speed here, this was a life or death decision for James Holm. That's the jury announcing its decision to give him a life sentence. And again, this is James Holmes of the Colorado movie theater shooting. This is all happening at the county courthouse in Centennial, Colorado, where we just saw James Holmes was issued this life sentence. He gunned down 12 people in July of 2012, and he injured 70 more at the Aurora Theater in Colorado. Last month, he was convicted of 24 counts, and that was first-degree murder, two for each of the victims who were killed in that shooting. Remember to stay with us because we will come back and bring you more on this at the bottom of the hour. Just a few minutes ago, convicted murderer James Holmes was sentenced to life in prison without parole, and that was after a jury was unable to agree on the death penalty. The jury rejected Holmes' insanity defense, and he was convicted of murdering 12 people and trying to kill 70 others, and that was during a midnight showing of the Batman movie The Dark Knight. That attack was one of the worst mass killings in U.S. history. Beth Karras, legal analyst and former prosecutor with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, joins us now here in New York. Beth, did that decision surprise you? It surprised me because I was following this case from the beginning, and they haven't been deliberating long in this particular phase. This was their fourth verdict. Every step of the way, they were unanimous, and returning a verdict, I thought, meant unanimity, and I thought, it must be death. So I was surprised, but there is an option on the verdict sheet that says we cannot or we are not unanimous as to death. We understand the court will now sentence him to life without parole. The sentencing isn't going to happen. Yeah, it's, it starts on August 24th and it's going to take three days because victims have a right to speak at sentencing. Which, which raises the question, you know, the, the victims, the survivors of the attack, and even the families of the victims were really split on how this should be handled. So is there an appeals process that they can take? Well, there will be an appeal, sure. Uh, he's getting a life without parole sentence. 
mandatory 12 times over and then he can get up to like 48 years for 70 other counts so he's never going to get out but he'll have an appeal this judge however and i've been in the criminal justice system reporting on it or trying cases for 30 years he's one of the best jurists that i've seen makes a complete record smart as can be really? knows the law i just don't see a lot of appellate issues so what do you think ultimately swayed the jury here why didn't they give him there's the someone on that jury who believes that his mental illness is the main mitigator, okay? I'm fine with giving him life without parole, but I'm not going to be responsible for his death because of his mental illness. Somebody is saying that. I don't know what the split is yet. It's too early. Maybe the jurors will be speaking soon. It may be a healthier split than 11 to 1 or 10 to 2, but there's someone on that jury who was willing to agree with everybody else one or two or more with everybody else on every other verdict they returned but when it came to death uh-uh but Beth, ho ho hold on go back a minute you're talking about this issue of mental illness and the reality of it is he has been diagnosed a schizophrenic right. but the jury already decided that hey look we know you're mentally ill but that still means you knew right from wrong which is also yeah. what the psychiatrist okay. said right but mental illness was uh, a factor two different ways in this case. One, as part of the insanity defense, which is what you just described, and they rejected that and they right. convicted him. And the second time they're considering it is as a mitigator, whether or not it justified saving his life. And the defense lawyer in her summation stood up and she, the other day and she said, I'll tell you why it's a mitigator, because if he wasn't mentally ill, this never would have happened. But the jury doesn't seem to buy that. They're saying you, he didn't did. know right from wrong. No, they, they rejected that, but somebody bought it for mm. the verdict that was returned to today. not be unanimous. So what do you think this says then about how we treat the mentally ill in this country when crimes have been committed? Do you think this is a broader statement that they don't deserve the death penalty? Oh, there's not enough time to answer that, Morgan. But I will tell you that our prisons are full of people who are mentally ill. They're not insane under the law, but they're mentally ill and they need help. But that doesn't mean we, we have a duty, we, the people, law enforcement, have a duty to protect everyone else from somebody who's mentally ill, who might take a cleaver and stab someone on the street, right? We have to do something with the mentally ill people. Incarcerating them en masse may not be the answer, but it's, it's the best we're doing right now. They, he needs treatment, he's going to get treatment, but this is a man who was a neuroscience PhD student, bright man, who plotted this murder for months, who, who carried on his life, making right from wrong decisions all along. Nobody detected anything going on. Booby trapped his apartment so it would blow up if law enforcement went there and, and distract the first responders. They'd go to his apartment so he could kill more people in right. the theater. I mean, mm -hmm. it was a diabolical act he engaged in, but if he weren't mentally ill, he wouldn't have done it. That's the argument. Uh, I don't know what, it, what, it, what the answer is. Throwing people, a lot of people in prison, is not a good thing either. But violent felons need to be apart from society to protect mm. you, me, and everyone else. We saw 12 people pay the ultimate price. All right, Beth Karras, thanks so much for joining us this My evening. My pleasure. Ours. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.